<laughs> okay, thank you everybody for joining us. And uh, first of all, a big thank you to our partners in the Lunch to Learn this year. Uh, we're very happy to be partnering with the JCA uh, for our uh, this year Lunch to Learn. Uh, every year is a new thing, a new excitement, uh, but we're so happy to see so many people back, right? Uh, and uh, it's really good to see new old faces coming back, right? Um, and students, nice to see you. Last time you had a lunch run was like years ago, right? Downtown, I think, once. Right. right? So it's really good to have you back. Um, and it's really nice to see uh, so many people back in person. It warms my heart uh, that I don't have to be staring at a computer. Nothing against you, Shlomo Miller. Right, um, that's still on the computer, right? But uh, it's really good to be uh, in person uh, and uh, talking to, to, to humans in person. I know I'm saying that a lot, but I really mean it. It, it really means a lot to me. Um, before we start, I just want to big, give a big thank you to our sponsor. Uh, our sponsor this week, this Lunch and Learn is Barry Cheaper in honor of Simma's Birthday. I was, I was told what to say, what not to say. I was censored. Right? Oh, sorry, Barry. I wasn't supposed to say that. Right? Uh, right? Uh, but a big, a big mazel tov to Sima Admei Ve'eshim until 120 and beyond. Right? But you should be healthy and, and sane, and you should have everything with you, and you should enjoy all your children and grandchildren, and you should only see nachas. And uh, thank you, the chief of families, for sponsoring the Lunch and Learn. And of course, there's always more Lunch and Learn to sponsor. So if you're interested in sponsoring the Lunch and Learn on any other program, uh, please feel free to contact Avi Feigenbaum, right? And I hope you all have my phone number. If you don't, you're in trouble. Um, so without further ado, let's get cracking. So today's Lunch to Learn, I, I, I have this whole nice little thing over here, right? Um, and uh, we're going to go through it. Right, but I, I want to start off with a very interesting uh, a very interesting thought that I had and I was putting together the lunch alert. Now we're going to start with the quote in a minute, right? but just a thought. When you think about the forefathers, right, there's, there's two forefathers that always usually, you know, stick out, uh, at least to me. What would you say? When you think about the forefathers, what's the first one Abraham. that comes to mind? Abraham. Excellent. Abraham, right? That's one of the most famous. Abraham. The next one, if you think about another forefather, who would you say? What? Isaac. Isaac. Okay, I wasn't going to say that. But Jacob, right? You're a very learned person, right? So you said Isaac also, right? But typically when I speak to people, right, they think about the forefathers, they know Abraham for sure. Then the next group of people, right, I would say, let's say about 50% will know Jacob too, right? But Isaac somehow in the middle gets squished. He's like, you know, that little uh, white part of the Oreo cookie, right? Uh, you know, he sort of gets squished in there. And uh, I would say probably about 25% to know Isaac, right? When I speak to most people. Uh, and, and today's class is not about Isaac, right? So why am I bringing this in? Right? Because it just, it just dawned upon me. It's not that I haven't started a class yet. It's just something to think about. You know, it is so important. We know so much information. There's so many things that we know. And, and I, I hope you guys could see me properly, right? There's so many things that, so much information that we know, if it's from sports, Right? Some people uh, are, are, are whizzes uh, of, of sports, of, you know, data and, and statistics and things like that. Other people know, you know, uh, law very well. Other people know uh, real estate uh, and, and other people know, uh, you know, Hollywood. And they can know, and some people know a bunch of those. It's a hobby. It's a business. It's different things. We have so much information in our heads. And if we just stop and think about it, how much information do we know about our Judaism? About our history? But who we come from, some basic knowledge. Did we put as much time or even a fraction of the time into reading up our, our Bible, our Torah, of knowing where we come from, knowing some basic information? How old was Abraham when he died? Right? Who was Abraham's wife? Who is Isaac's wife? Right? When did Moshe live? Right? Who are the 12 tribes? Some basic information. Who is Moshe's sister? Who is the Aaron's brother? It's your question, please, Moses. Right. So there's so much information, and forget about getting into the to the prophets. Okay, that's already more. But just from the Torah, some basic. How many years were the Jewish people in in the desert for? And, and some of them we know more. Some of them we don't know. And it just dawned upon me. Now I was putting this class together, and, and I hope you guys don't mind. I haven't started the class yet. Right? It's just something that really resonated with me. That something that 
really have to reflect on it. It's something that I have to think about also, because I'll be honest, off the top of my head, if someone would ask me how long Isaac lived, I got to think about it for a minute. Right? Got to think about it for a minute. I might even have to look it up. Right? It's right there. Right? But I might have to even look it up. There's certain information that I also might have to look up. Okay. I don't know stats of baseball things and all that stuff. I was never good at that. Right? And growing up, we had this baseball game that we used to play. Right? That um, that someone will pick a card out, a baseball card out. And you had to guess who the player was. And you would start up with one piece of information, right? You guys play this game? No? Right? You start up with one piece of information. Let's say uh, he has a, let's say it was a pitcher. He has the ERA of whatever. I don't know if it's a bat. He has a batting average of whatever, right? And then if that was, if you didn't get it with that, so then you gave another piece of information. He's on this team, right? And it depends on how much information you got. If you got a home run, a triple, a double. No, we used to play that game. I always got out. <laughs> I always got out, right? I, I didn't know. Unless if it was like, I, I, even if it was like the Blue Jay players, Kelly Gruber, Pat Porter, remember those famous players, right? Um, you know, Devon White, um, some famous players of the Blue Jays of 92, 93 when they won the World Series. I, I still don't know their stats. That's not, not something I know. But there's some people that know it. So it's just something to reflect on, um, you know, as I was just thinking about this class, right? There's something to reflect on of, we have to be more knowledgeable about us, about our Judaism. Right? We have so much knowledge going around in our heads. And if the person has no knowledge in their head and they're a stoner, okay, that's one thing, right? right? But we have so much, so much knowledge in our head. So let's make sure that we know who we, who we come from. Okay, on that note, right? So Mark Twain said something very powerful. Mark Twain said, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant. I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much the old man had learned in seven years. All right, famous quote from, from, from Mark Twain. All right, so why did I start this quote from Mark Twain? And it really fits in a little bit to what we're talking about. There is so much information, there's so much things that we think we know, right? We have a certain perception of something but it's really so much deeper that as we start learning more, as we become older, we realize right, there's layers upon layers of what's really going on from the surface. And it's not really the surface that we have to be, be concerned about. It's really more the layers upon layers that's digging down. And that's really the 14 year old just sees things one way. Right? But as you become older, you see things that, that are more complicated. You think there's more reasons why things are done in certain ways. And then you truly understand your parents' decisions you hope, right? Depends on the parents, but you hope you understand why your parents made certain decisions or why they made or they didn't allow you to do certain things. And that's the same thing with Jacob. Jacob's a little complicated, right? As we said, Jacob is well known, not as well known as Abraham, but he's extremely well known. Jacob's the one that birthed the 12 sons. We are known as B'nai Yaakov or B'nai Yisrael, right? Is Yisrael is Jacob's other name, right? Jacob had two names, right? Not at birth but God gave him another name called Yisrael. And Jacob was able to keep both names. Not like when God changed Abram's name to Abraham. He added the letter. And you're not allowed to call him by his original name. You have to call him Abraham, right? But Jacob actually was able to retain both names, Yaakov and Yisrael. And, and we are known as B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel. We're not known B'nai Abraham. We're not known B'nai Yitzchak. Right? Yes, we're B'nai Abraham, but really what do we refer to in the Torah? We're referred to either as B'nai Yisrael or we're referred to as B'nai Yaakov. In, in, in the Matovu, one of the prayers in the morning, right, we start off with the Matovu. It actually comes from uh, Bilam Harasha, Bilam, the prophet who tried to curse the Jewish people, but God can't change it into a blessing. We start off and say, Matovu Ho'alecha. How pleasant are your tents, Yaakov, Umishkina Secha Yisrael, and the dwelling places of Yisrael. We don't say how pleasant are the tents of Abraham or Isaac. We say Yaakov and Yisrael. We use both of Jacob's names. So we are known as the children of Yaakov, right? We are known as the children of Yisrael. So Jacob had a tremendous influence. Of course, Abraham had a tremendous influence, but Abraham, Jacob has a tremendous influence. So who was Jacob? What, what are the lessons that we're supposed to tons, but what are some of the lessons that we're supposed to learn from Jacob? Who was Jacob? All right, so 
there, there's seemingly two different radical approaches to understand Yaakov. I said Asa, I meant Yaakov, right? Glad that everybody caught that, right? Um, right? I meant Yaakov, right? So who was Yaakov? There's two, seemingly two different radical approaches, right? Which of course, it's not two different approaches, it's two parts of Jacob. But on one hand, the Midrash, right? Uh, Midrash tells us as, as Jacob as one who was uh, in the study in the womb of, of, of Rebecca, right? Rebecca was their mother in the womb, right? It says that she had pain in her stomach. And the Midrash tells us that what was this pain in her stomach? It wasn't this good old fashioned labor pain. I hear it's very hard, right? It's very painful, right? But what was it? It was this mystical kind of pain because when she would pass by a big Midrash, a study hall, Jacob would try to run out and go learn Torah. Right? And when she passed by a place of idol worshiping, Asa would try to run out and learn and could serve idol worshiping. Let's leave Asa aside. But the Midrash tells us that Jacob, even in his stomach, even as a fetus, had a spiritual connection that he understood that when he passed by a house of prayer or a house of learning, he understood that there was spirituality to it and he wanted to connect to it. We know the Midrash tells us that it says, Vayolan Vayom Balailahu, he slept on that night. When he had the famous dream of the ladder, it says he slept that night. The Madras said, what do you mean he slept that night? Don't you sleep every night? What do you mean he slept that night? So the Madras tells us because for 14 years prior to now, he never slept in a bed because he was learning in the big Madras of shame and anger. He was learning 14 years straight. He'd fall asleep on the table. He didn't want to waste any time. So we see on one hand, Jacob is, this man of Torah, the man of dedication, of, of learning, the spiritual entity. On the other hand, we find that in the text, the Torah presents, when the Torah tells us about the stories of Yaakov, and Yaakov is, we have the most stories about Yaakov. Yitzchak, he says like that little cream in the middle, right? there's a parsha and a half about Yitzchak, right? And Yaakov has, Avram has a couple of parshas, but Yaakov, we have the most stories about and what are the stories that the Torah tells us about Yaakov? Let's just go through some of them. His brother will try to kill him, right? He stole the blessings from his, from his brother, right? He uh, had to work for Laban and Lavan. His father-in-law tricked him, right? And he had to work there for, for 14 years for two wives, right? And then he stayed for a little longer. And he was just told us about his business dealings, right? Then his brother again comes with 400 men to try to kill him. And then what happens? His daughter gets molested. And then what happens is two children wipe out a city. Then what happens is that his son gets abducted and he thinks he's lost forever and he's missing his child. So the majority of what it tells us about Yaakov's life is hardship, is his, his struggles, his difficulty. Why does the Torah not tell us in the Midrash that he was trying to learn Torah and that he studied for 14 years and I'm sure there's many other stories of his spirituality and his good deeds. What does the Torah come and tell us? The Torah tells us about Yaakov's challenges and hardships and col colors Jacob, Yaakov as a colorful person, right? As a, it was, it was taking the blessings and this and, and business person and, 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 and running away from Lava in the middle of the night. Those are all the stories that the Torah tells us about Yaakov. So we have to understand what is the Torah trying to tell us? Of course, they're both correct. What is the Torah trying to tell us? And why is the Torah tell us these stories? So there's many different ideas, but the idea that I want to share with you today, right, is based off one verse, not one verse, but one section of when the Torah tells us about Yaakov. And the very famous story of Yaakov fighting with the angel, right? As it says in Genesis 32, 25, 32, right? From 25 to 32, Jacob remained alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. Right? The text seems to deliberately engage, um, speak about Yaakov fighting, the, the wrestling with the person. Right? He wrestled with the person until daybreak. Why does the Torah have to go ahead and, and, and specify that he wrestled with the person until daybreak? He wrestled with him and he won. Come on, he, he move on. Right? What's the Torah telling us? And it seems that this is an idea of Jacob. And not only that, after he won, what did the angel tell him? The angel introduced to him, it wasn't yet. God is the one that changed his name. But the angel introduced to him that God is going to change his name. He's strong. 
That's when he reached the level of being able to get the name Yisrael after he wrestled. Why was it that story? Why wasn't it after learning 14 years in Shane behavior, right, in the study hall that he received the name Yisrael, which has God's name in it? Why was it after he fought this struggle and he overcame it? And that's when he says, you won over an angel, God's going to change your name later. It wasn't too much longer that God changed his name. What is this story teaching us? So my friends, this story is teaching us something very powerful in the essence of the Jewish people. Jacob struggled with his success. They felt struggled. Yes, our forefather Jacob! Right? The one that the Midrash says that his face is chakuk, his face is engraved in the divine presence, a cheer of glory, whatever that means. It's a metaphor. Right? But it says that Jacob's face, it doesn't say Abraham, it doesn't say Moshe, right? it doesn't say King David, but Jacob's face is ingrained, right? it is carved out in God's cheer of glory, whatever that means. Right? Jacob struggled for success. He didn't have it easy. He, yeah, he was a son of, grandson of Abraham. He had, he had great liturgy. Grandson of Abraham, son of Isaac, come on. All right. He has it easy. He has it going for him, right? Uh -uh. He had a hard life. He had struggles. Jacob struggled with his success. Who am I? Jacob, the man of the tent, right? Or Esau, the man of the field. If Jacob's cross, uh, if Jacob crossed the river, and I'm just reading this and we'll expand on it. As Jacob crossed the river and sees the reflection, he questions his identity. Had he begun to look like Asa? Had he, his fulfillment of, of stealing the breast actually turned him into Asa? Has his dealings with his uncle, right, Laban, turned him into an Asa? Has his if being imbued in the materialistic world and in the physical world has turned him into an Asa? The commentaries say that's why the angel of Asaph came to, to fight with him. That was the internal struggle that he had. He had an internal struggle of who am I? What do I believe in? Right? What is my goal in life? Where am I going? What am I, what's my purpose? What am I doing with everything that I'm doing on my daily, my, my daily activities? He was, he was out in the fields. He was a farmer. He was, he was, a, he was a shepherd. Right? He had children. I'm sure he had tuition, right, to pay, right? Barry probably would uh, get after him, you know, for a donation to the synagogue, right? <laughs> right? right? He had news. He had things. He had, he had responsibilities. Right? He had a daily, daily thing, just like all of us. That was his struggle. And that's why the angel came and fought with him. That's me. He struggled the whole night with this. Now, the night, as we know, represents darkness. There's this beautiful idea of Arya Kaplan, a blessed memory, right? Powerhouse, I re highly recommend for me the books. And if Arya Kaplan says like this, the Hebrew word of faith, right, is emuna. Right? Emuna. If you look at it, it's aleph, mem, vav, nun, hey. Right? If you look inside, it's very cool. Look at the word, the letters, the Hebrew letters. Right? It comes from the root, uh, uh, the, this comes from the same root as uman, a craftsman. Right? Same letters, Aleph, Vav, Mem, Nun, right? It's the same root of the letters. What is, one is Emuna. The vowels tell you to read it differently and there's a hey at the end. It's Emuna or Uman, a craftsman. It's the same letters. And as we've spoken about a billion times, and not a billion times, but as we've spoken about many times, right? in Judaism, in the Hebrew language, in the Lashon HaKodesh, the Holy Tongue, right? there's a rhyme and reason why words have a similar mean a similar makeup, right? For example, we said many times the word shalom means peace, but shalom also means complete, right? There's many words that have different meanings or there's a, a letter or the way you read it, right? Has is the vowel tell you to read it differently, but there's a reason why. And what is that? Faith cannot be, right? As Javari Kaplan explains, faith cannot be spirit from action, but what act, faith comes from how we demonstrate our belief in God and the Creator. An Uman, we have to work on our faith. Right? A worker, a craftsman works on his product. He molds it, and he works on it, and he makes it into a beautiful jug, into a beautiful art piece. To, 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 if he, he crafts his, his, his work, whatever that may be, right? if it's actually working with his hands or it's his intellect, 
right? A craftsman works on something. He, he's busy with this. He's making sure that every inch, I mean, a good craftsman, you can see this fine, fine details, right? The fine details of taking a toothpick and making sure there's that like little hole right there. That's what a good craftsman does. And a moon of faith, has to be something that we have to constantly work in. It's not something that just comes. It's not something that we inherit. Right? It's not something that, uh, oh, I did, I'm good. Well, okay, now I have to relax for the next 60 years. No, it's something that we're constantly working on. And that's what Jacob represents. Right? Jacob represents, of course, Abraham and Isaac did this, but Jacob Im imbued this idea. Jacob lived this idea. Jacob did it to the highest degree. Right? And that's why, right? That's why Jacob it tells us he struggled. And it tells us about his physical his struggles. Because the way to make sure that we are molding ourselves correctly is we have to struggle with ourselves. You know, one of the uh, Thomas Edison said, and I'll, I'll I'll expand on this for a second. Thomas Edison said five percent of people think, ten percent think that they think, and the other eighty-five would rather die than think. <laughs> So many times, you know, so many times, and this is this is what by struggle. So many times, if we don't struggle, if we don't question ourselves, right, and we don't challenge ourselves, then we're really no different than a dead corpse. And I, I don't mean to be morbid, but I'm I'm talking serious, right? Because we're just walking the walk and talking to talk and doing our thing, and going around, and whatever it is we might be doing, even if we're putting our toe on a leading post or whatever it is. Of course, you get a level of reward for actually doing the mitzvot. But we don't challenge ourselves. We don't question ourselves. Then we're just staying stagnant of the way we are. We have to question ourselves. We have to challenge ourselves. We have to be like Jacob and say, who am I? What are the actions that I'm doing? Are they leading me towards closer to God? Or are they leading me away from God? It's because there's no such thing as being stagnant in Judaism. And we know that. There's no such thing. We have to work. We have to toil. We have to try. And we can't just say, oh, I'm good. We have to question ourselves. You know, one of the perks of, of, of it's not one of the perks, but one of the beauties of, because it's not really a perk, I don't do it that often, but of, 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 of really, and my wife tells me this sometimes, you know, of really working with little kids, sometimes the questions that they ask is so innocent, right? Or, you know, or as, as your own kids, right? So why is this person like this? Why are you doing that? Why, why, why is it, right? And you have these, and it's like sometimes you're going, Shh, don't ask that question. We don't want to rock the boat. Or why? We get like all, but you know what? That's, that's how they grow, right? By challenging, by asking, okay, it has to be done in a proper way. And it has to be respectful for other. We can't be harmful to other people. And at the same time, we have to ask. We have to ask, what is our value? And we have to ask, what, what will we do in such a situation? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chat, a group, WhatsApp group chat, uh, with um, colleagues, rabbis across the country, right? And in Canada, yeah. Um, but uh, across the country, right? That are in similar field that I am, not necessarily uh, synagogue rabbis, uh, but, uh, you know, some of them have their own organizations, but mostly in outreach, in reach, education, Right, uh, kind of people. Some of them are working in synagogues like I do also. Right, um, and, and one of the beauties of it, yeah, every once in a while people can suggest it. But one, what I like about the chat a lot is, and I'm, a, I, you know, I'm more of a uh, uh, taking a back step. I listen a lot right, on the chat. I don't, I don't interact too much. Every once in a while I get my opinion, but I more like to observe the chat. Um, and one of the things I like about the chat is hearing the questions that people are posing right, to the chat of situations that they're put into, right? Of, of, of how to deal with the situation. So I'm gonna ask them this question or someone did something and they wanna know what's the right way to handle this, right? Or, or, or how do we balance our, our, our beliefs and at the same time not hurting other people's feelings? And how do we balance that? And there's questions from left to right. It's unbelievable the questions that are asked. Because we're all in different situations and we're dealing with people on different levels and there's always questions. That's what I like about the chat the most, because it, it makes me think, makes me reflect. How would I how how would I do in such a situation, and right? how how would I react? 
and it makes me question myself. And when I hear other people's answers, I reflect, oh, maybe I didn't think about that. Oh, the guy is so wrong, right? <laughs> no, I don't do that that often. Right? But, but it just, it makes you think, it makes you reflect. That's how we challenge ourselves. That's what Jacob represents. We find a similar thing in the temple. Remember, some of the says, if you turn the page or not, right? right? We find when the Kohanim risked their lives for divine service, right? the, the Maccabees, right? The Kohanim, right? With unwaving dedication, they immediately saw miracles. In the war, God gave them over the, the strong into the hands of the weak. Right? In the temple, God gave them the miracle, the flask of oil. Why? Where did the miracle stem from? And we gave a whole class on Hanukkah. But where did the miracle come from? Miracle came from because they were willing to question themselves and then take the risk. Take the risk for what they believe. That's a craftsman. And a craftsman takes the risk. He doesn't know if this pottery or whatever it is or the case he takes or whatever it is, the challenge that he has. Right? He doesn't know if it's going to be successful or not. If he was guaranteed, there's no second in it, right? For all those in the professional world, you know, if there's guarantee, right, okay, it's another one, it's an easy one. There's no excitement in that, there's no growing from that, right? It's okay, it's okay, it's very nice. I know it's a guarantee. But the excitement is when there's a challenge. We like that challenge, right? Well, we want to win the challenge, right? But we like the challenge. And when, if we don't take that challenge and we're scared of the challenge, and we're not willing to put ourselves in, we're not willing to, of course, you're not to be stupid, right? But we're not willing to invest some money or invest our time or take kind of client that we might lose or whatever it is, so then there's no challenge, there's no opportunity for a tremendous growth. Same thing with our, our, our dedication with God. Once we question ourselves and we start reflecting what's right and wrong, then the next step is to, chat, to, to, to be dedicated right? and to accept the challenge and to go to it. And that's what the Kahana and the, the Maccabees, right? that's what they did. They accepted the challenge and said, no, we're not going to let the Greeks excuse me, take over. We're not going to let the Greeks ruin Judaism. We're going to go and fight. We're small. We still have to go and fight. We've made a decision. This is our challenge. This is what we have to do. We have to show God our dedication. What will we all be? God stepped in and helped us. Right? And that's, that's, a, that's a, a tremendous idea. The second step, right? Number one is questioning ourselves. Number two, then once we question ourselves and we realize what's the direction we need to go to actually take that direction. And that's what we see from Jacob. We'll come around in a minute to the full circle of Jacob. All right? But from this story of that he followed the angel, the first tells us that he walked over the river. Why does it tell us that he walked over the river? He left the Pach and Katana, the, the small vessel. Right? It says, because he looked at the river and he reflected in himself. And he said, who am I? What am I doing? This Everything that I've been doing, where am I going? Then he said, no, I'm going to go forward. God threw him the challenge of Asaph. He could have just gave in and said, you know, forget it. Me fighting an angel? Are you crazy? Right? It's an angel! Right? No. And he went and he fought. Did he think he's going to win? Doesn't know. He gets clapped in the, in the, the hip. Right? The angel almost got him. But he held on strong. And that's why we don't need to get on us. So we don't need the, the, the calf area. There's like uh, the, the limbs over there. Because right, he the angel hit him. I don't want to get into that one. Right? <laughs> That's another whole class. Right? But but the idea is, and what do we see? He did not give up. He went for the challenge and he kept on fighting until until summer when things became clear. And that leads us to the next idea. And then we'll get back to Rabbi Sachs's point of the difference between Isaac and everybody, Jacob and everybody else. Darkness, right? When you have darkness. Right? You can't see anything. Right? You can't see anything. Right? So we shut all the lights. We black, do put a blackout on the doors. Right? We can't see anything. You can't see in front of you. Right? You can't see the person. You can't see their facial expressions. You can't see anything. Right? So what, is, what darkness disconnects people? Right? It disconnects us. It doesn't allow us to interact. It doesn't allow us to challenge us, to, to see what's going on. Light, on the other hand, allows one to see the entire world in which he stands. It allows him to see the people who are close to him and the environment they share in which they, they create share, a shared life. Right? So the difference of darkness and light, there's many differences, many metaphors for it. But on a very practical level, right, darkness does not allow us to connect with other people, to build that infrastructure, that support system, right, 
to be able to overcome our challenges. Because the only way that we're able to overcome our challenges is that we have a support system. Right? When well, we're able to realize why did the angel attack Yaakov when he was alone? Because he had no support system in a metaphoric way. Jacob was, again, we're talking about Jacob, and he was able to overcome it. But he attacked him he, when he was vulnerable, when his children were not around, right? when no one was around to help him. Yaakov went back by himself. That's darkness. But when he was around other people, right, the angel didn't dare to challenge him. Because he knew he didn't even have a chance. And that's what light represents. That's what it means when Alosha Shaka, when the light came up, he was able to see the family in the distance, right? And he was able to take that, overcome it, and, 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 and conquer. One of the ways we have to realize that we are able to overcome our challenges and to encourage us, not only to overcome our challenges, but to encourage us to take on the challenge is by building a support system. Building people that we know that are going to help us. Building people that are going to know that are going to encourage us. Yes, you could keep Shabbat. Yes, you could light Friday night candles. Yes, you could start uh, eating some kosher. Right? You could start wearing the keep around a little more. Whatever it may be. Right? Each one of us have our own challenges. You could stop talking La Shanahara, evil talk. Right? Or are you going to support you? We're going to, you, you won't feel like an outcast in the Kiddush. Right? Hang out with us. Whatever it is. It's not been Adam the Kaverim between man and his, and, 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 and his fellow, between man and God, and whatever the mitzvah is, and at whatever level you're ready to take it on. You need that support system to say, We're here for you. We're here to talk, help you out. We're here to support you. If you're feeling a little down, give me a ring, give me a buzz. Right? Come over and let's talk about it. You need that support system. That's what light is. And that, by knowing that you have that support system, that allows you to even start a challenge. You know what? I'm going to start this challenge, whatever it may be. All right? I'm going to start uh, learning a little more. I'm going to start keep wearing a kippah, you know, outside of synagogue. I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to hang up uh, a moda'ani in my house. All right? Whatever it may be. So many things that we could start off with. We can start those challenges reflecting into ourselves when we know that we have other people to deal with. And that's what it means that the light came up. And Yaakov saw everybody who was able to overcome things. So now let's look at what Rabbi Sachs says. Right? Send up Jonathan Sachs. What is, what, is, what is it that made Jacob, not Abraham, or Isaac, or Moshe, the true father of the Jewish people? And as we said, we are known as B'nai Yisrael, B'nai Yaakov. We are, right, we are the children of Jacob. Right? Jacob spent more of his time in exile than any other patriarch. Right? Think about it. Abraham was in the land of Israel the majority of his life. Right? Isaac never left the land of Israel. Right? Jacob was in, 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 in Haran. Right? Then he was in Egypt for, that, for a big part of his life. So he spent the majority of his life outside of Israel. Right? Of all the figures in Genesis, of all the figures in Bereshus, in the book of right? he, he he he's the greatest survivor. Right? He's the greatest survivor. It is, was that Jacob's I had wrestling match and with destiny that he eventually achieved what neither Abraham nor Isaac accomplished. All his children stayed within the faith that is Jacob. Think about this. Abraham had Yishmael, right? Isaac had Asa. Jacob had the 12 tribes. All of them are stayed in the faith. All of them are called Shifte Ka, the, the, the tribes of God, right? They're the lofty tribes. They're all righteous. Yeah, they had their struggles also, but they're all considered righteous. Jacob is the one that had all of them. What is it? There are saintly people whom spiritually comes as easily as the music to Mozart. Does, God does not reach out only to the saints. He reaches out to all of us. That is why he gave, that is why he gave us Abraham, for those who love. Isaac, for those who fear. And this is a punchline, my friend. Jacob, Israel, for those who struggle. This is what we started off with. Yaakov represents the strugglers. And let's be honest, that's probably the majority of us. And I don't know about you guys, you righteous people, but I know I struggle. Right? I know I struggle all the time. Right? For those who struggle. Jacob represents the strugglers. Right? And the strugglers right, is reality. That's what this teaches. We're called B'nai Yaakov, the children of Yaakov. Because that is the reality of life. The reality of life is that we struggle. 
the reality of life that we have hardships, but the reality, reality of life is that we have, we want to get closer to God, but we have things that are stopping us. If it's family, if it's society, if it's ourselves, if it's our desires, we have things that are stopping us. That struggle, that is a constant struggle. That's what Jacob represents. Jacob represents those who struggle. Now, as a, this is so the, the power of different kinds of struggles. When I was a when I was a ye lad, right? Uh, when I, I was probably about uh, eight nine years old, maybe ten. And so I was a I was a talkative kid. I was. Uh, you guys can imagine. Uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I, I I would make a lot of conversation with our guests, and I wasn't the one that sat in the back and like just listened to the conversation. I'd be very part of the conversation. I, yeah, I know it's a shock, um, but it's, I remember one time we we my parents had a lot of guests over, right? Um, it's uh, you know we had religious people, we had a lot of non-religious people, we had college students um, over, we had young professionals over, and we had families. Remember well, this one time this 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 college student uh, sort of graduating slash getting to becoming a young professional. I remember the deck where he was, but he, he came to our house a couple of times and he sort of became a, a regular. He became one of the regulars. And I remember one time he uh, he, he he made a declaration on the Shabbos table. He said, "I just want to say, all right, we're going to make a lachaim. I decided to stop eating selfish and 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 crap." That's decided to stop eating. We all excellent, great, perfect, excellent, right? Beautiful, right? right? And uh, and I remember I made a comment, right? I, I made a comment, right? I said, you know, this is this is something so awesome. There's a statement in the Talmud, right, that says, "B'makom shabal tshuva omer," and a place that a, a a someone that repents, someone that returns back to God, bal tshuva, someone who returns. I hate the word repent. And it sounds like, oh, repentors! Right? I hate the word repent. Right? Um, but uh, one who returns back to God, right? Balshuba, one who returns back to God. The place that the Balshuba stands up in heaven, whatever that means, eventually, or in the eyes of God. Right? Even a righteous person, a Torah scholar, is, cannot stand in that presence because one who returns back, right? That's an unbelievable sense. That's such a, what a powerful thing you just did. And eventually he be eventually he actually took on all kosher, right? And then I lost track of where he was, right? But that's not the point of the story. He said something very powerful back to me. He says, I hear that. He says, but you know, I, I have a question on that. So my question on that is, is that you know, for me, and this is this is show how we all have different kinds of struggles, right? And one has to realize that everybody has a different kind of struggle and reflect on the struggles. He says, so. Let's think about this for a minute. Says I'm here, yeah, 21 years old, 20 years old, 21 years old, whatever it is, right? I didn't grow up religious, and I, I've, I've indulged in all. I'm a, I was a college student for God's sake, right? I indulged in all, indulged in all aspects of, of the materialistic world, and I didn't gain anything out of it, right? I really, I, I felt no fulfillment there, mm-hmm. and so I, I realized that I have to, I have to have a little more fulfillment in my life, and that's what's pushing me. I started studying uh, the rabbi named Rabbi Benji Jacoby. And that's how he started uh, connecting with on campus. And then he, he hooked us, hooked them up to eat by our house. Right? And, and I, I was yearning, I was seeking. So for me, it's like, I, I felt empty till now. I indulged in everything. I had all the pleasures. And he says, but you, right? I guess I was still an innocent boy. Right? But said, you, you know, you're living here in Toronto. Right? Yeah, I know it came out Toronto. Right? Um, I'm living here in Toronto. And, and, and you... Um, you, you know, you're in your insular, you know, community, right? I, I was considered a little less insular. We watch videos every once in a while. Right? My parents will let us take out videos and watch. Yeah, I watch the Mighty Ducks, I come alone, and all those stuff, right? <laughs> but right, overall, I would be considered like we're in an insular community. And you, but you see what's going on, right? You see the lights, you see the excitement, you know that there's things going on out there, and you decide to, to, stay, to stay in, in, in the environment that you are. And not to go explore. He said, for me, I think that's a greater challenge. I said, oh, here. <laughs> right? the, the answer to this question is exactly point. And that's really an answer to, to everything. We're all vultures. And we're all, there's not, the Talmud tells us in another place that there's only four people that never sinned in their life. 
right? So if anybody, even Moshe Rabbeinu, right? Everybody that repents, I'm gonna hate that word, but everybody that returns and 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 and, and it comes over their transgressions, right? They're in theory called the Balchuba. It's not a side point. That's just to explain the Talmud, right? So you're really all Balchuba. The point I'm trying to bring out with the story is that, that we have to realize that we all have different forms of challenges. But we all have different forms. Some have a challenge of, of because they are so in, so so love their 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 materialistic pleasures that it's hard for them to overcome it. Other people is that they're more thinkers and they realize that they don't have anything there and now they have to you know expand more and then and then make putting more meaning in things. Other people are refraining from checking that. We all have different. We have some people. It's family. Some people. It's college. Some people. It's their business. Some people. It's whatever it is. And, and, and we're all on different levels of challenges. Some people. It's giving a little more charity. Some people. It's come making sure they come to synagogue every day. Some people. It's making sure they come to synagogue once a month. Right? But some people. It's uh, you know not eating selfish and, and crap. For other people. It's making sure that they eat the right kosher symbol. Right? Because they want to eat kosher, but to make sure that the, they're eating the kosher symbols that are are are, are recommended. Right? And not just, oh, the coach symbol, and that's fine. We're all holding on different levels. We're all holding on different levels. We all have different challenges. Right? And the point of the story is to show that we all have to realize that there are challenges out there. And challenges come in all shapes and forms. Challenges come in all shapes and forms. Sometimes we don't even recognize that we're within a challenge. We just think that that's the way things are. The only way to do, to recognize it, that we're in a challenge is what Jacob did was look at the water, look at his reflection, and say, what am I doing? Where am I going? And then having a support system, a rabbi, a friend, right? People that you could talk to and say, hey, am I going the right way? Am I doing the right thing? And just to, uh, to end, right? Uh, Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt said, right, the ability to survive and to recover is part of what it takes to be a leader. It is the willingness to live a life of risk that makes such an individual different from others. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, who, face, who faces a mirror by dust and sweat and blood, who strives right, right? Who is the real leaders? Real leaders are not the people that are playing it safe, right? Real leaders are the ones that are willing to take the risk. The real leaders are the ones that get their hands dirty, right? True leaders are the ones that get into the nitty-gritty and, and, and sweat. That's where true valor is. That's where true greatness is. That's how we truly transform ourselves. And he was talking about World War II, right? The people that are going into the trenches, right? But, but this is, that's where true leaders and that's what Jacob represents. That's what the Torah is telling us. The Torah is telling us about Jacob, all his hardships. The Torah is telling us about Jacob, his struggles. And if you think about it, look through the Torah, right? If you really look through the Torah, Right? I remember one of my rabbis once asked, you know, if, if the Torah was sort of our book, right? Oh, it's our history book. It's our book of who we are. It portrays the Jewish people in the worst way possible, right? <laughs> if, I, if I was writing a history book, let's say about the Jewish people of H. Chaim or Jacksonville, and what would I do? I'd say, oh, the people are great. Kiddush was awesome, right? Everybody, they, they just, the community went so well. You don't bring, you don't put out all your dirty laundry for eternity, right? You don't do that, right? If you look at the Torah, it's constantly talking about the Jewish people's, let's call it struggles, right? All the way from, and right? all the way from not wanting to go out of Egypt when Moshe came to them and they told Moshe, Moshe and Aaron that you're making the work harder, to you know sinning with them with sinning by the, by by the golden calf to the sin of the the the, the Miraglin, the, the spies. Right? And everything in between. The Torah is constantly talking about the struggles of the Jewish people. And not only that, it talks about Moshe's transgressions. Right? It talks about Jacob's struggles. The Torah is, a, it, it's, it's, it's like, hello, right? This is, oh, Jewish people, they came to be formed into a nation, right? Let me put out all our dirty laundry. Really? The answer is because the Torah is not a history. The Torah is a lesson. Is our, is our God. And God is teaching us, like we just said right now, the only way to grow is by recognizing that we are humans and we have struggles. Yes, some have attained higher levels of spirituality, and we have to remember that. Right? And we have to show that respect and realize that there's certain things that on, God judges them on their level. And God, when he put the story of, of, 
of, of, of, of, of uh, Moshe sinning or King David sinning, right? It put a magnifying on the, on the sin for us to be able to learn from it. And of course, if we were at that time, we wouldn't even think it was a sin because we're talking about lofty people, but on their level, though it's considered a sin because God judges each person based on their level. But the Torah is, God wants us to realize that struggle is the way to grow. We're the children of Yaakov, the, the, the forefather of struggle. And just to, to end, right, uh, this, in the, in the, this, uh, the Gross Roads and Labor Camp, prisoners held service daily. By doing so, right, these prisoners outwitted the Nazi system by remaining human and preserving their own identity and will. And I wanted to end with this powerful, it's not a really a story, there's whole stories behind this, and there's stories upon stories of people that have sacrificed their life Right, to, to, to sneak in filling, right, flactories, to sneak in a sitter, right? They made Hanukkah candles, they preserved, they saved their, their, their rations of, of potato, right? And to, to be able to make it into a little, a little butter and to use it as cups and to make, they took from their, from their from near clothing, or you can't even call it clothing, whatever it was, right? Their rags, and they took threads to make wicks. They sacrificed, they struggled, is because the way to grow, the way for us to keep, to keep our humanity, the way for us to keep our sanity, the way for us to be who we are, and the way we survive throughout history, it's a miracle. But that miracle comes from our power that we attain from our forefather, Jacob, of living through the struggle and recognizing our struggle and not bending into the hardship. Not just saying, I give up. It's too hard. There's a crusade coming. Forget it. Right? The Greeks have come. We're giving up. Right? The Inquisition, giving up. The persecutions in the Arab countries, giving up. Holocaust, giving up. Terrorist attacks, giving up. We don't do that. So why should we do that when God is being kind to us and not giving us all these attacks and allowing us to, 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 to live in a country and a time where we're able to practice our duty? Yes, there is anti-Semitism out there, but it's not even a fraction of what we used to be. We're so lucky to be able to live and to have a beautiful Jewish center over here and have synagogues out and be able to, 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 to have a, 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 a not to say the Torah, a Bria and a Sefer Torah and walk through the streets of Jacksonville we're so lucky. So why are we giving up now and just assimilating into the secular society? Why can't we say, no, we're not giving up? Just like the Jews that didn't give up during inquisitions and, and, and crusades and persecutions and bombs. We are the children of Jacob. We don't give up. We go through the struggle and we become stronger. So if we take one thing out of Jacob is that Alosha Shachai struggled until the light came and he was able to connect with everybody. And he realized that the struggle is only a temporary time because once we overcome struggle, we fight through the struggle, we hold on to the struggle. Then we can see the light at the end of the tunnel and we could be together, we could grow and we will feel like different people. A new challenge will arise. I promise you. But then we take that challenge one at a time. So let's all connect to this powerful idea and say, thank you, God, for not giving us a struggle of having to find, you know, uh, a wick out of the clothing of, I don't know what, but some kind of rags that we had. But let, let us overcome the struggles that we do have, which is a powerful struggle. Not, as we said, struggles come in all shapes and forms. And get closer to our Father in heaven because that's how we have survived throughout history. And that's why we're called B'nai Yaakov, the children of Yaakov. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you very much.